Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Straight Up RC. This is Chris. This video is a demonstration of the easiest brushed RC motor test ever. So the idea behind this video comes from the personal experience of talking to people, witnessing, and seeing people post on Facebook issues about an RC car that has steering, but it has no motor control. And if it still has steering, that usually means that the remote is fine and the receiver is probably fine. And sometimes it could be the receiver's throttle channel, but more often than not, it's probably something to do with either the ESC or the motor. So this test helps determine that one of those two items, one being the motor, does function. It eliminates the possibility of a failed motor. So this test can be conducted on any brush model RC car from any company and pretty much in any scale, whether it's a 10th scale motor, whether it's a 12th or 14th scale motor, or something like in an 18th scale or even 24th scale. As long as it's a brush motor, this test will work. Basically, this test can only be conducted on brushed motors because brushed motors usually just have a positive and negative wire. You can't do this same test on a brushless system because brushless motors have three wires. Now, some people may not know the difference between brushless and brush, and that's fine, that's a whole nother topic. But this test process is a simple and easy on the spot test that you can conduct with any brush model RC car to make sure and identify whether or not it's your motor or your ESC. Simply put, the test in itself is simply supplying power to the brushed motor from a power source like a battery to engage the motor or to give it the voltage that the ESC would normally give it. It's a very simple process and it's a direct test to identify whether or not this works. So the basic goal of this test is to simply supply power to the motor. And to do that, we're gonna take the battery lead and connect it directly to the plugs on the motor. In this case, just using a standard nickel metal battery, this one has a banana plug, which has a male and a female bullet, which makes this a really easy process. So we simply take the leads off the motor, whether it's bare wire or it's these plugs, and we connect it. So on this one, I'm gonna plug this into the female end, and I'm gonna simply take the negative wire take the lead and connect it directly to the lead on the battery. And it's basically supplying power directly to the motor in the amount of voltage that the battery has. So now we're gonna conduct the same exact test with the smaller motor. And again, this test can be done on pretty much everything from the little tiny 24 scale motors all the way up to larger motors, which I'm gonna demonstrate in just a minute. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Even this thing doesn't have bullets. I'm going to take the lead wire and I'm going to just put the wire into the pocket for the female end and then I'm going to take the negative wire and I'm going to literally do the exact same thing and tap the negative bullet. And you see that spark right there? That spark can happen on these motors when you're connecting it to a power source because the battery is going to put voltage to these wires instantaneously so that little spark can happen especially when you use a lipo battery so whenever you're going to use a lipo battery as well this one's lucky enough to have a deans or a banana plug but sometimes you're going to get xt60s you're going to get traxxas plugs you're going to have deans plugs and it's not exactly that easy to connect these bullets or these wires to those batteries so one of the tricks that you can do is you can simply take some excess wire cut it and you can you know, use these wires to put it into the Dean's plug or XT60 or 90, whatever, and you can actually like tape it in or whatever, give it, get it set up to where you can then use these and then connect to the power source, the motor, whatever the case may be. So that's one trick. Another thing that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind is that when you're conducting the test, these motors can fail in one direction and not the other. So when you're conducting this test, you may want to attempt to plug the battery in positive to negative and negative to positive back and forth. You may want to flip the wires because simply put, when you put positive to positive, negative to negative, the polarity of the battery and the motor is going to spin one direction. So it's only going to test it in one direction, clockwise, let's say. So if you want to make sure that it rotates the other direction, 
Simply take the battery lead and flip it as well. And this will cause the motor to spin the opposite direction that you just tested it, thus testing both counterclockwise rotation and clockwise rotation. Sometimes the vehicle will only drive forward, but it won't go backwards because something in the motor has failed and it doesn't want or can't understand how to go the other direction. Like that polarity is messed up. So keep that in mind when you're doing the test that if you want to do a quick swap of it, positive to positive, negative to negative, and then flip it, do positive to negative, negative to positive. This is going to test your motor in both directions, make sure that you should have both forward momentum and reverse. Another thing you can do is if you get your hands on a voltmeter and it has these excess test leads or probe leads or whatever the case may be, these are really, really nice. They come in handy because you can use these, uh, the probe ends, and you can actually directly connect it to these motor leads. And then this gives you the ability to use the bullets on the other end and not have to worry about it, you know, falling off or disconnecting or something of that nature. These are really, really helpful. You can, like I said, you can get them with a voltmeter. You could probably buy these alone, whatever the case may be. And I'm gonna demonstrate how these work with one of the cars that we're gonna test. So now we're gonna do the exact same test, but this time we're gonna do it on an actual vehicle where the motor is still installed. And the reason that this test is so easy is because it can be done to a vehicle like this because all it takes is to supply power to the motor directly. So there's a little bit of a trick though, because if you give this motor power when it's installed to the vehicle and it does work, this car is gonna take off. So we gotta make that not happen. So the trick is, is to obviously in some cases, because this has nice little body posts and it's got a fairly parallel body, you know, it's nice and even, we can just simply flip the car over, pull the wires out, test it, and it'll operate because it's not connected to the ground. Now, this is just a simple two wheel drive vehicle. There's no front wheel drive, so you don't have to worry about anything like that. So that's one trick. You can flip the car over. Another thing you can do is you can take a wheel or some sort and you can actually prop the vehicle up. This way you can test the vehicle without the wheels touching the ground still. Same exact concept. The third thing you can do is if you have one, you can simply take an RC stand, car stand, and set up the vehicle on the car stand. It doesn't matter what you do, as long as you get the wheels off the ground, because these are gonna be connected and it's gonna make the vehicle drive. Now, you might have a friend helping you, or you might have a friend that can come over and assist you, and you can actually just have him hold this up and you test it, that way the wheels are on the ground too. That's, that's obviously another thing that you could do. So now that we are comfortable with our setup and we're ready to test it, well, now you obviously have to get to the motor leads. Now, the majority of your brushed motors are going to have these like bullet connectors on the wires from the ESC to the motor. And oftentimes people get scared of these because they're like, mm, I probably shouldn't pry on this. I probably shouldn't disconnect this. I, I don't want to break it. I don't want to damage it. The car's, you know, fairly new. The kid got it for Christmas and it's a month old, whatever. So this is a little intimidating, but you don't have to worry about it. As long as you don't take pliers to these or scissors or a screwdriver, or you do something crazy, or you're yanking on the motor, like only from this side and you yank the wires out of the ESC. As long as you don't do that, you're gonna be just fine. These motors are intended to be plugged in in this way, so they can be worked on, they can be replaced, they can be simply unplugged in a moment's notice. So the trick is, is just simply grab the wires as close to the silicone as you can, which is you know there for protection, keeping it dry and everything, and you just pull. That's it, that's all you have to do. You just disconnect, it's a quick little tug. Some vehicles that are brand new are gonna be really tough. Some are gonna be fairly easy. So simple as that and see, that one was a little tough. So I mean, you, you, you see what I'm saying there where it can be a little difficult, but they're intended to come apart. Don't be scared to do this. Now, once you have your motor disconnected, the vehicle is basically ready to test, but there's two things that you can do at this point. Now, obviously this motor is still installed in the vehicle and as right now we don't know or we're not concerned about there being any driveline issues. So when you supply power to these wires, these wheels are gonna move, just like I said. Now, the one thing you can do is prop this up. The other thing you can do is if you have the ability to and you wanna take the time to do it, majority of these vehicles are going to have covers or, or, or the ability to get access to the motor pinion and spur gear. And in this case, all I would need to do is simply loosen the motor, slide it over, and 
disengage the pinion from the spur. That way it doesn't engage the drivetrain. It doesn't engage the spur, the transmission, the differential, the whole nine yards. Then I can test it all I want because the only thing that's gonna rotate would be the pinion. So if you wanna take the time to do it, it's a little bit more time consuming, but it can be done. You can just simply move the motor over and test it just like that. We are gonna go ahead and test this one just like this to show you exactly what's gonna happen. So in this case, I just simply take my battery, and again, I want to use a nickel metal, that way it's just not as aggressive, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't engage the motor too quickly, and it's not as uh, of, of a powerful takeoff. So, take the wires, just like I did before, and I'm going to kind of hold the car so it doesn't go anywhere, it's still going to move a little bit, but I don't want it to move too much, so I'm just going to hold the car just a little bit, just to, you know, so it's a little secure. that easy. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do it on another vehicle. That easy. And we're going to do it on another vehicle. That easy. Now we're going to do this on a smaller, more particular vehicle. This is a Volcano 18 and as you can see it doesn't have the bullets, you know, like a 10th scale. It's got a much, much, much smaller motor, little small blocks, uh, like kind of Tamiya style uh, mini plug. This process is not exactly as easy as just connecting this to a battery. So what we're gonna do this time is we're going to use the wires that I had stated prior to conduct this test. And this is gonna make it really easy because all we need to do is disconnect the motor from the ESC so we don't send voltage both directions. And we're gonna supply power directly to the motor installed on these little leads on the back obviously positive and negative. So I'm going to connect these to the battery to make this simple and the leads go into the battery just like so. And I can't exactly hold this here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the probe end and I'm going to pry it into the negative slot and it's going to kind of stay there that way this is secure. Now I can test the motor. So all I need to do is gain access to the positive connection on the motor and the negative connection on the motor and theoretically speaking this motor should work. just like that. Now for just demonstrational purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and test this brushed motor in this scooter, just to show that brushed motors in themselves react the same way regardless of what they're in, what model they're in, or what their use is. The brushed motors testing process is pretty much universal. So uh, this this is a, normally a, about a 12 to 24 volt scooter. I've gone ahead and made these wire connectors prior and disconnected the motor in itself from the you know the speed control and all the other nonsense in here so this is just a basic jumper directly to the motor so i'm gonna do the exact same thing that i did on the rc motors and it should work Just like that. Now some simple follow-up tips once you've conducted the test and you've identified that the motor does work. You're gonna notice that when you go to plug this back into a new ESC or maybe plug it back in because now you know that everything works just fine, you're gonna notice that obviously you've unplugged everything and you may not remember which way it went. Well, the good thing about brushed motors is, is there's no real wrong way to plug it in. It's positive, negative, negative, positive. Now, the key factor is, is that once you plug these back in by simply plugging back in the bullets back into the wires from the ESC. When you turn the system back on, whether it's a new ESC or the same ESC and the vehicle works, when you pull the trigger, if the vehicle goes the wrong direction, all you need to do is simply flip the wires. That's it. There's no tricks, there's no gimmicks, nothing of that nature. It just basically means that you have the wires crossed in polarity. And all you need to do is unplug, whether it's black and red, if these are all black, if these are black and red, but it still goes backwards, doesn't matter. All you need to do to switch the operational direction of a brushed motor on a brushed ESC and brushed car is simply take the wires and flip them. That's it. Colors don't matter. All that matters is the polarity and which way that you're making it go. If you have any more questions or you're confused about any part of this process, feel free to leave me a message or comment down below. You can message me on Facebook and Instagram as well. Some people may already know how to do this and that's totally understandable. 
And some people may be scared to do it, but might need a little bit of encouragement or reassurance on exactly how this process works. So feel free to let me know. As always, thank you for watching. And if you'd like, feel free to subscribe and stick around for more straight up RC content. Thanks for watching.